And we're back. Well, Jack, we're here today with another Plinketto episode of Best of the Worst. Mm -hmm. I can't really recall the last Plinketto episode. Hmm. This is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Holy f doing the mouth. Uh, but our first film, Who Killed Captain Alex? Yes. By the Walk Hollywood Film Company. Yes. Uh, of course, this is a famous, famous B-movie, which we have never watched. It's true. Very and, excited. Hopefully. And a very inspiring story about people uh, making a, a action-packed, special effects heavy movie on less than no budget. Sure, sure. Everybody in Uganda must come for Wisconsin is famous for snow and the space cups. Wow. No, I know which kind of space cup is the best yeah, movie ever made. Our next film is The Suckling. He'll always be mommy's little mutant. He'll always be mommy's little mutant? Yeah. Is this a story about Rich Evans? Fuck you. Fuck you. So what's next, Mike? It's another film about Rich Evans, Evil Spawn. <laughs> I can't even look at him. <laughs> I can't even look at him. I won't make eye contact. That's 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 smart. Uh, next up is The Howling. Uh, two. Two. It's not over yet. The next movie is Brian Bosworth Stone Cold. Oh, that's it. And next is the center of the Plinketto board, which is Dropper's Choice. Yes, yes. I hope to land on that uh, because I just said the ball rarely lands in the middle, and I am very excited to watch Space Jacked. Uh, spaceships, guns, babes screaming. What else? What else can you ask for? Uh, it's got it all. It's got it. I all. know it's going to have it all. Next is Ice Cream Man. And I think, haven't we done this on an episode already? Definitely not. No, you I don't think so. You don't think? No. I think. Why am I remembering? I was watching it and doing a whole discussion. <laughs> so weird. The overall fucking relationship. Welcome to Senility. Starring uh, Clint Howard, uh, famous Star Trek alumni and brother of director Ron Howard. Yes, the more handsomer of the Howard mm. brothers. W women love that, that deformed head of his. Yes, yes. <laughs> not to misshapen, maybe. Well, misshapen is the kind word for deformed, right? Is that the more PC term? Right? I feel like I can't talk Dif about people's shapes head because mine's very egg-like. So. You have a normal head. <laughs> First of all, thank you. I appreciate that. Misshapen, deformed are offensive words. It's differently shaped. Differently shaped. But then that, that implies that a, a sense of normalcy that they are not involved That's in. True. So that is also not very How PC. about shaped head? He has a shaped head. <laughs> Mike, I prefer the term alternatively handsome. Alternatively <laughs> handsome. Is that what you've been called, Rich? Alternatively handsome? <laughs> That's what my mom says about me. Uh, next is Dungeon Master. Oh. The, that's such a generic title. I, I, I thought we would have watched this by now. Mm -hmm. I think I confused this with Beastmaster. Sure. Uh, and, uh, and one of the millions of dungeon movies that wow. we have on the shelves. Um, you know, we'll try to, if we do watch this, we'll try to limit our number of uh, critical fail or nat one right, jokes. Right, 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 yes. Rain it D &D. in. Uh, next is Disintegration. Why don't you go ahead and take a look at this box, Jack? What? Oh, no. What I have do a we feeling know? we're not going to land on it. So yeah. this is a blind pick. This is a blind pick. This is, we pulled it off the shelf. We looked at the back. Okay. And we just said, let's roll the dice on this one. And lastly, a film that predates Best of the Worst, a classic uh, movie night movie, Blood Shack. 
This is The Trooper, the film also known as The Trooper, and this is the film that inspired the phrase, shoot in the rodeo. What a lineup, what a spectacular, what a marvel we have before us. It's amazing, it truly is, uh, and it's gonna be a great time. Yes. It's gonna be a great day. If, let's not even watch any of these. I'm so happy with just seeing the covers. We don't even need to watch it. All right. Yeah. All right. We'll see you later. This is great. Where, where do I leave? Is there an exit? Well, Jack, why don't you drop the first ball? I'd love to. This is a ball. Oh, there's creepy things back here. Oh, it's going towards the middle. Oh. <laughs> what happened? What are you in it? Ice cream, man. Oh. I know. I, I have nothing to do with this. Mike, yeah. I'm gonna make a distraction. Okay. You put in Space Jack. Yeah. <laughs> right? We could do it. We could do Get it, ready. Rich. Get ready. Three. We I've wasted 19 minutes of our lives. I'm just gonna go get something. Oh, Rich, what are you doing? Oh! Oh, no. oh, oh Jay, look oh, over there! Oh, my goodness. Oh, Jay, look at that! Jay! Jay. Help me, Jay, I'm Jay. falling down! Jay, I'm over Rich is falling down! Oh, my God! Oh. No, no. Oh, for fuck's sake. Here. <laughs> hey, oh! I landed on Space Jack. <laughs> You landed on Space Jack on your first attempt. I landed on Space Jack, everybody. happy to be there. Well, Rich, this is drop two. Do your best. Jay, you've, you've put our fate in my hands. I want you to think about that. Well, what do you, what do you want it to land on? And think about this, think about this wisely. Okay. Because what you want it to land on, Whatever it will I not. Whatever I want it to land on, we will not get. Exactly. So I definitely want to watch Disintegration Man. Okay, that's great. That is my pick. It's totally gonna fucking land on disintegration now. I really wanna land on disintegration, man. Just there, go. All right. Oh. What is it, what is it, what is it? Dungeon Master. Oh, damn. Rich, we didn't land on disintegration. <laughs> we didn't land on it. Oh, oh, it failed. Uh, the Dungeon Master. He is the overlord of strange beasts and stolen souls. Richard Mull, the sword and the sorcerer, Night Court. Oh, they do list Night Court. I was gonna say, if they that, don't list Night Court. That's totally the order I'd put that in too, right? He, he should just, he shouldn't even go by his name. He should just go by Bull when he <laughs> acts in other things. <laughs> Bull from Night Court will be his official credit. And Jeffrey Byron, star in this futuristic thriller about an evil wizard who wanders the galaxies in search of a formidable opponent to play his brutal and very deadly game. So we're we're mixing sci-fi and fantasy here. Okay. Okay. And we're gonna start in uh, contemporary LA. Yeah. And we will spend 50% of the movie in a guy's apartment. Yeah. 
Either that or wandering around the woods. Well, that'll be the first part of the movie, the fantasy part. No, it'll start modern LA. Then the fantasy will be him in the woods. It'll be Griffith Park. And then uh, he'll go to a post-apocalyptic world and it'll be the desert. See, I think we're going to start the fantasy land, which will be the forest preserves near LA. Okay. And then they're going to get in their spaceship which will be made out of cardboard, and then that will crash in downtown LA. Okay. That's what I think. Whatever they can do to keep the budget down. <laughs> Just throw it in any direction. It doesn't matter. Oh no. I feel bad for him. Oh, oh no. Poor guy. Goblin! What? What? Oh, it created a bit of a gravity well because Einstein understood that gravity and time space uh, intersected with each other. Uh -huh. That made perfect sense. <laughs> I'm sure that's what happened. Okay, Mike, it is all up to you now. I'm gonna do my best to save the night. You do your best to let random chance be random. I'm gonna try really hard. Okay. <laughs> The suckling. I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. Very little on the back. Oh, okay, let's. let's... One sentence. Uh, after a woman goes to a back alley abortion clinic, that's how we want any movie to start, uh, her aborted fetus attacks her, her boyfriend, and everyone else at the place. <laughs> <laughs> at the place. Uh, you know, we only needed one sentence on the back of this box, and that was it. After a woman goes to a back alley abortion clinic, her aborted fetus attacks her, her boyfriend, and everyone else at the place. That's like, that's like if you're just lazily describing a movie to your friend. <laughs> and then it always says he'll always be mommy's little mutant. Uh, wow! I have so many emotions right now and, and they're all horror. Yeah, well let's go watch The Suckling. Do we have to? I don't know what to say except the strangest thing I ever heard. Why did they get the wackiest looking people to be in the doctors? Because <laughs> they're the ones they could afford. Because <laughs> they said we're making a movie about an aborted fetus monster. <laughs> and these are the ones that said, okay. All right, sure. <laughs> <laughs>
that's that's full of leaves <laughs> and feathers it's, and feathers. And it's the story <laughs> of an unused uh, spaceship set somewhere in Los Angeles. Tiger. Ah! What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I tried to flip through the wall and planted on naked people. <laughs> The real question is, why is there dust everywhere? Like they blew through drywall. Because <laughs> spaceships are made with drywall, <laughs> Jay. They still have to. You don't know what spaceships are made of. <laughs> right. It's true. Yeah. Winner, I won an award. Oh, shit. most creative use of cardboard. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so proud of this production. <laughs> and plastic parts from a junkyard. Most unexpected use of feathers. Move that cramp. Don't make it a bat for all of us. I will try and make it. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Feathers? feathers? <laughs> what the fuck? In Space Jack, Jack is trying to explain that Corbin Bernstein. Uh, <laughs> Bernstein. Roger. He's not a bear. <laughs> Corbin Berenstein Bear. <laughs> Jack, it's Bear Stein. Oh. Hello! He, ta he takes over the ship because it's full of billionaires and he has a plan to kind of disable the ship, hold the billionaires hostage to get a bunch of money. Um, uh, so uh, the intro to the movie is, uh, is the opulent billionaire party in which we see people judge knees. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a weird start. That's very weird. Edward Tubin from Sioux Falls, Idaho has the knobby sneeze in outer space. <laughs> Look, the guy was offering ecstasy pills or virtual reality porn. The yeah. older older people are into the knee judging contest. <laughs> okay. When given the choice. The combination of these things make the cruise part of this completely irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Both of them you could do in your shitty studio apartment. Yeah, you don't need to go on a luxury cruise. Oh, this in wasn't fact. a shitty studio apartment? I mean, that's where they shot it, sure. Oh, they did the doodly doo. <laughs> they actually did it. Yeah. Her sexual fantasy is to be raped by a caveman. <laughs> oh my God! It is apparently. How embarrassing! <laughs> How embarrassing <laughs> for everyone. Ooh. Uh. And she's in the middle, like, of the public square. Yeah. That's the real thing. She didn't take the VR goggles back to her private quarters or anything. <laughs> right? It's the future. They're all just, they're all just uh, out and open about this kind of thing. You didn't fix Monica Miles up with a VR fantasy, did you? What of it? Well, she's an addict. Been through detox and everything. She's a big girl. She's well, addicted to getting like fucked by cavemen? <laughs> <laughs> In classic Roger Corman fashion, we get two sets. Mm. Well, three if you count the hallway, I guess. <laughs> the one hallway. The one hallway, yeah. Are you all right? <laughs> That's like a show. It's, it's, yeah. Inside the ship. Well, don't forget the, the uh, captain of the space freighter, his uh, cockpit. I mean, that was... Oh, yeah. That was quite a set. They, they literally just shot it in a junkyard. Well, it feels like a subpar generic action movie that they decided later in, in like the, the pre-production process to say, let's set it in space. Because it, it could be, yeah, set on a cruise ship or on a, a, a fancy plane or something. But they decided, let's make it in space. You're going to go far in this business. After you. Hey, thanks for all your help. Oh. <laughs> well, Roger Corman had a spaceship set already for like eight of his other movies. Yeah. Make it on this set and it will cost me less money, mm -hmm. says Roger Corman. Can we get Corbin Bernson for an afternoon? Okay. Uh, well, he was on Star Trek The Next Generation. Right, Roger yeah. Corman? He no, no. <laughs> he, he probably was too. <laughs> <laughs> He's Corbin. in Silence of the Lambs, Roger Corman. He is. Yeah. He's in it. George Romero's in it. Getting back to the shitty movie. <laughs> right. uh, yes, this is a very action schlocky movie without any of the budget for the fun schlock. Well, they have the fight scene at the end, um, <laughs> and then they have my favorite sequence in the movie, 
the explosion and subsequent disaster sequence, which is just yes. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the standout like sequence of the movie. Mm -hmm. It's where the movie falls apart, literally. Two, one, blast off. Whoa! Whoa! Oh. oh my god, our cardboard sex! <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> All right, now you can't pull too hard. <laughs> Why did they fill the ceiling full of rocks? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone get on the big set. <laughs> Oh no, nothing happened. Uh, uh oh. Whoa. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> With every edit, it takes like a half a second before something bad happens. Yeah. So they're like, are you, are you filming? <laughs> All right. Anybody? He, he's putting a bug zapper on his face. <laughs> Why are you doing that? <laughs> The, the Poseidon adventure moment, because yeah. that's kind of what this reminds me of. It, um, the, a bunch of rich people on a yacht or, or cruise space cruise ship. They're going on a cruise to the moon, and it cost them a million dollars each to be on it. In the most terrible looking set with the worst <laughs> host, the guy with the blue hair, yeah. and the microphone, and oh, it's just so dirty. It looks like the space cop uh, ma moon mayor set. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those like terrible <laughs> windows. So they, pay, they paid a fortune to go on this junky ship. Um, and then Corbin Burnson sets off a bomb, or rather, he has an android set off a bomb who does it incorrectly, and it blows up the whole ship. Right. Mostly. Much to the help of the budget, it blows up all of the potential cast. Not see that coming. <laughs> Do you think that was just unrelated footage of their set falling apart? <laughs> 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 and they just changed, changed the story to finish. <laughs> we got some rewrites for you. <laughs> we had all the cameras rolling. Now hold on to your seats, everybody. It's Gonna get nothing but boring from here on out. <laughs> yeah, hey, we, we got excitement. It's an action movie where our action heroes don't have anything action y to do. Like, see, virtual reality, like, sex addiction lady, that should have came into play later, where she tricked Corbin Bernson. Into having her. virtual reality sex with her. <laughs> like you, 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 something. If a character has a strength or a quirk, you use they use it later in the film to the advantage of the story. Yes. Instead of the end, a guy just punches Corbin Burnson. That's true. And then uh, lets toxic gas into the room, so Corbin Burnson freezes. <laughs> he freezes. And then he left the set, so they still needed shots where his character would be in the background, so they just put a crew member under his sheet. Because Corbin Burns to the left. He was fucking my done. Part. One of the neat aspects of this, being as low budget as it is, is they have like anti gravity moments. You know, they have moments where the characters are in zero G and like floating around, and they're shot shockingly well. Yeah? Yeah, I think we figured out how they did it. How they like hung them from the ceiling and they just had the whole set kind of sideways or whatever, but it's not bad. It works really well. Yeah. Yeah. And far cheaper than Apollo 13. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they skimped on the budget for the helmets that they wear when they're in space. <laughs> I like how it just goes on the shoulders. Yeah. There's no like sealant. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's, on, it's a helmet. F fuck it. Go, go, go. Watch her put it on with nothing underneath it. Yep. It looks like one of those like old timey diving yes. helmets. You yes. Know? So that zero G scene, there was a, a, an incredible zero G scene where they had to climb the outside of the spaceship that given just like 10 more dollars could have been super exciting and intense, but um, Is that the would have. closest we get to any kind of tension in this movie? I can't grab anything for some reason. <laughs> My fingers stopped working. Oh, you have to close your hand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've never been to space before. 
A special note needs to be paid to Corbin Bernson's performance. He, well, yeah, this was like, I'm gonna do whatever. I'm, I'm here for a day and a half. I'm just gonna have fun with it. Is this some sort of fucking android revenge? You think you're human now? You're not! Inching along. Bah! Bah! A lot of people watching this might not realize that this man was one of the biggest stars on one of the biggest network shows 30 years ago. It's not like, it's not like this is just a nobody. This is somebody who can theoretically act. There's a whole graveyard filled with movies of actors that have passed their prime, that, have, <laughs> that do shit like this. It's not surprising, right? But, but long enough for him to actually forget how to act? No, he just didn't care. I, he, yeah, he, no, does, he knows how to act. That, he just doesn't point. give a shit. <laughs> watching this, what I'm saying is watching this, you would not realize that this is a man who can, in fact, act. <laughs> right. <laughs> he's, he's entertaining himself yeah. to the detriment of the movie. I would say that he's chewing the scenery, but I know he doesn't like the taste of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> trying. Styrofoam? Uh, Ooh, better. Cardboard is more hard... Consonants, styrofoam. Yeah. Styrofoam and hot glue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot glue. Cardboard. Cardboard's funnier. Yeah, cardboard's Punches funnier. Punches more. Styrofoam. I would say Legos. <laughs> Legos would be funny. He does like the taste of Legos. Because yeah. <laughs> the set made of Legos. Fe feathers. Funny. <laughs> feathers. <laughs> well, speaking of bad, though, the, the ship that they get onto at the very end of this is somehow even worse looking than our main spaceship set. <laughs> It looks like backstage at a high school theater production. Yeah, there's just shit laying there's up stuff, against the wall. What do we got left over? It just looks like right over there. Yeah, it's, yeah, it looks like the corner of our studio. Some brooms and some wall, some flats. You're a goddamn android! I programmed you! What? For some reason, our main villain is now wacky. Yeah. And they made the decision to make him a like a Home Alone villain. Yeah. <laughs> In this just dreadfully serious uh, science fiction film. I would like to make a special note of the weird ass soundtrack. To yeah. Space oh, yeah. shit. The real star of the film, not Corbin Burnson. It's the Birdman score. It evolves over the film. It starts with literally one string on a violin, just <laughs> Then you get a Congo drum. Then you get a Congo <laughs> drum. <laughs> the Congo drum, why not? And then it turns into literal arty farty fuck Birdman drum solo only soundtrack. Im improvisational jazz, yeah. There's a trumpet. Then there's a guy cleaning the reed for the, for oh, the right. flute. Right. <laughs> 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 like tuning something. I, Corman was like, cut, that was perfect. He said, oh, I wasn't even playing anything. I was just uh, tuning up my instrument. Oh, that's it's, great. It's, then I don't have to pay you. Yeah, it's already in the film. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on. Right. We have to score Carnosaur 3 this afternoon. <laughs> that is 10 minutes of your service. <laughs> oh, I'll Here bet is you. your coupon to Subway. <laughs> I bet you this is some labs in Carnosaur 3. Oh, yeah. oh, that's it's not necessarily space, it might be science it might labs. Be labs. Now you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> the whole section. <laughs> Just leave it in. It's the only that android is so strong. All right. I think I think they were going for like unhinged bad guy, but but the score the score throws is you what, off. is yeah. what threw it off. We spent less time rolling around in a spray painted office chair. <laughs> uh, more time trying to get bank account numbers. He might have been more successful. I'm glad we never saw Die Hard starring Corbin Burns. Yeah. <laughs> He would have just rolled his uh, office chair right out the window. <laughs> <laughs> J 
John McClane never even has to reach for the gun. <laughs> he, he, John McClane had just taken his shoes off and he just hears somebody fall out. Oh, oh, wow. oh, wow. What a weird Christmas party this is, honey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back yeah, to the movie. Yeah. Bah. Bah. The dungeon, dungeon master. master. Oh, oh, look, Space Jack ain't got nothing on the Dungeon Master. Well, dungeon Master. Why don't you tell us all about it, Rich? The, the, the Dungeon Master is... A.K.A. Rage War. A.K.A. Rage War. Uh, there's a computer nerd who has all of the technology. Like, he has, he has magical uh, glasses. He, he predicted tons of things that are now common technologies. Yes. Google Glass. His glasses are basically Google Glass. Yeah, he's got a Fitbit. He's got a he's got a Fitbit, and he he can use this technology to manipulate stoplights. Yes, which is you know not accurate today, but still. Oh, also he invented Siri. Well, how was my time? Three minutes over yesterday. So he goes home to his girlfriend and proposes to her, and then she turns him down because he's a computer nerd. <laughs> Which, even though, even though with all this hot tech he's sitting on, we know this man's going to be a multi-billionaire within a decade. <laughs> even <laughs> beyond that, Rich, he has a stable job and looks to be in... He's a healthy man with a stable job and they seem to have a good relationship. Who cares if he's a tech nerd if that's Look, his job? She's jealous of the computer. Yes, yes, that's important to note. It's, sure. it's not because he's a computer nerd, it's she's jealous. That's true, that's true. She's jealous of the computer. And then they're kidnapped by Satan. What? <laughs> then that happens. <laughs> it's important to phrase it that way because it just happens it just out happens. of nowhere. Yeah. There's no setup for it. He, there, well, it opens with a fantasy scene, mm -hmm. and then he has another fantasy sequence. And then immediately after he has the other dream, Satan teleports him <laughs> to hell. Yes. <laughs> I don't believe this. So he had a dream about a fantasy or a fantasy world, and then he got sucked into his computer to a fantasy world. Wait, so this just happens? I guess, yeah. No hinting. There's no like, like the, you don't know, start the movie on like, like the creepy hand scrying. I need to find my next challenge. Oh, that would have been great. Yeah. And yeah. then we cut into the guy mm -hmm. at work. This computer nerd looks to be a worthy adversary. Yeah, no, no nothing. nothing like that. Yeah. <laughs> Satan just shows up. <laughs> it's bull from Night it's Court. Bull, it's man, it's bull from Night Court. <laughs> it's, it's, it's insult to injury. <laughs> it looks like a vampire. <laughs> But he has selected, uh, what's his name? Did computer nerd, I'm just gonna call him computer nerd. Yeah, I don't remember He selects that. computer nerd as his, his next opponent because computer nerd has this wonderful new magic. Yeah. Because Satan sees the, the computer Google glasses and everything as some form of magic. Yes. It, it's actually kind of an interesting little setup here where he's like, I have witnessed you have mastery over this new magic technology. So you are a worthy opponent, like that's, that's interesting. I'm okay with that. Well, that's that's what they have as an interesting concept. They don't flesh it out into a, an interesting story. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they, well, the the the, uh, the bad part too is like this is not an interesting concept. No. Right? No. Um, this is an interesting concept, but it also has the ability, like the it has the, the props and the monsters mm -hmm. and like this is just. No, like so, the the sets are so bad. Um, but this, like, some of the stuff in here is neat. Well, I think it's the it's, zombies look great. Yeah, well, like what we talked about with Space Jacks, like the theory that oh, they had existing sets, so they just shot a movie on it. Yeah, uh, Dungeon Master. It's important to point out is directed by like six or seven different people. Yeah, it's a bunch. It's a series of little vignettes, right. uh, challenges. Well, because Satan the, gives them this, challenges. The setup is Satan says that. Computer nerd has to go through seven different yeah. challenges, and every every challenge is a little little mini movie directed by somebody else. Yes. and it feels like because this is produced by Charles Band, and a lot of the directors are people that he's worked with before on movies like you know, Ghoulies and Puppet Master and all this shit, and it feels like a lot of things that they already had like laying around. Yes. we see at one point uh, John Carl Beekler, R.I.P., directed one of the segments, and. 
he just flat out reuses his little ghoul puppet from his, like, Deathstalker. De- his right. demon goblin. Yeah, yeah, it's the exact same puppet from Deathstalker. Uh, I mean, why not? shows up. Well, yeah. Like, <laughs> that's, that's what it feels like, though, where it's like, hey, we have all these things. We have access to the band Wasp. <laughs> New director. So what's, what's the challenge here? Just to listen to the music? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Whoa. So one of the challenges is like facing the rock and roll demon guy. It has nothing know, to do yeah. with fantasy or Fuck anything, it, yeah. but we know the band Wasp. Like, <laughs> well, this they is... did a music video for Ghoulies too, so let's throw them in here. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> no, no, this is something special. Yes. Yeah. This is great. The girl is always in, in peril in every scenario for mm-hmm. some reason because I guess if he doesn't complete the challenges, they go to hell, right? Both is that of the them. threat? He gets both right. of their souls. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the guy who is a computer nerd and he should have been a game programmer. Oh, I'm, yeah. I've been yeah, working yeah. really hard on programming this fantasy game where you, you, know, you go through these challenges and you fight these monsters. And then Satan says, he makes a deal with Satan. <laughs> For our, our escape, you can challenge all these mortals via these games. Yeah. And all over the world, people will be playing. And, and I'll keep Satan busy for millennia. Yes. Right? And or, or, like, I have a challenge for you. I've made a game. You have to play in my game. Something, oh, uh, some fun, yeah. clever twist. So they punch each other. <laughs> And I'm just like this one. And that is the major, that is like the first major problem with this. There is nothing clever about any of the challenges. Yeah. He we doesn't kept, have to solve puzzles. We keep waiting have to... for the puzzle. Mm-hmm. And it's always shoot the laser. He, he needs to be with somebody he can talk to. Yeah, it's weird that he's just silent through the whole yeah. thing. Yes. Give him a, give him a sidekick. And he can say things like, well, what do we need to do in this challenge? Yeah. I don't know, Dan. Then, then, you know, they could formulate a plan, yeah. execute the plan, maybe have to improvise along the way. Yeah, yeah. You know, like what would happen in a movie? Maybe maybe, maybe the, the girlfriend isn't kidnapped. Maybe she's with him. Ooh. And she learns about computers. He has to use it on his arm. And he learns that she has some useful skills as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you can't always rely on your computer. You oh, fuck, Rich. You gotta rely on good old fashioned human intuition. That's right. <laughs> it's like you've seen a movie before. <laughs> in, in the fantasy land, his yes. computer cal is an armband, his computer armband. Right. And it serves the same purpose every single time he uses it, which, oh, it shoots a laser. Well, the, the problem is, is he ends up in scenarios where computer technology doesn't exist. So there's nothing for the computer to interact with. Like, yeah, like sure, during that car problem. chase, the closest thing I could think of, well, there's the real life scenario, which he does use to disable the police locks on the, the car door, remember? Oh, sure, sure. That was like a non-laser, I'm trying to think of non-laser applications <laughs> yes. of his armband. But everything else is just like, like ghouls and goblins kind of stuff, sword and sorcery, <laughs> where a computer is not applicable whatsoever. Yes. Not Ooh, Einstein. Einstein. <laughs> or leftovers from oh, Madame Tussauds that closed. <laughs> what a weird combo. Yeah. Looks like every criminal in the world is here. Oh, and oh, Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> For his crimes against God. <laughs> <laughs> He's just waiting for it. Take that, Jack the Ripper. <laughs> oh my God, the mummy. Fuck you, mummy. The mummy, the wolfman, and Einstein. <laughs> History's greatest monsters. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, he is... He's fit, he's in shape, he jogs, he's a handsome-ish leading actor man, and he's already dating the girl 
and or getting married. Sure, she's not quite sure about marriage because she's a little jealous of the computer, but what you do is you have the, the cheerleader type who is kind of like, oh, that's the neighbor kid, you know, he's, he's kind of nerdy. Oh, well, I'm really into computers. He likes computers. computers. Yeah, but, but she still has a little soft spot for him. Oh, you're kind of cute. You know, you, know, you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> someday I'll get her. You know, he's not, he's, not, he's not hideously ugly like most nerds. He, he's he's what, uh, what I call movie glasses ugly, right? He's, 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 yeah, he oh, might yeah. be kind of normal, but he's got the glasses with the tape in the middle, and he, he doesn't quite know what to do around the girls, and he's into computers. And then she ends up in the, in the, in the, in the hellscape with Satan, and she's like, it's you? You're here to save You're me? the hero? Right, right. I'll show you. And then oh, throughout the course of the movie, <laughs> Eventually, he'll lose his glasses. He might gain some courage and some strength, and then he'll prove to her that he is indeed a hero on the inside and out. By right? punching Satan. Sure. <laughs> well, no, we don't do that. He outsmarts Satan. Sure, you do something more yeah, clever. Yeah, yeah, you don't. But but that's like the kind of the typical '80s like setup, right? Yeah. You don't have like handsome football jock man. As a computer nerd, who's on top also of that. a computer? It don't make yeah. sense. <laughs> and that's that's. I will say, this movie we're talking about everything it gets wrong. The fact that it gets all these things wrong and it is so blunt and stupid is what makes it entertaining in its own right. It does. It has a bit of a charm to it. Premise alone is so great. They really fumbled it, but it, it that's, has a lot to of me. Fun that's there. the charm, though. Yeah. The fact that they 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 just went with the dumbest, most simplistic <laughs> thing for every possible idea yes. makes it fun. Absolutely. <laughs> I shall destroy you. I reject your reality and I substitute my own. <laughs> hey, that's something. I know. That sounds familiar. What is that from? I reject your reality and substitute my own. We, we do know that there's at least two fans of this movie, one being J.J. Abrams, because he cast the lead actor in a very minor role in Star Trek 09. How the hell did that kid beat your test? And the other being Adam Savage of Mythbusters. That's right. <laughs> yes, the famous quote. It's a famous quote to somebody, and I guess it is to Adam Savage. It, it's it's a, a line that he said on Mythbusters that it became very, very popular, but apparently it originated right here in the Dungeon Masters. <laughs> well, I, I see, I didn't even know the Adam Savage connection. I just heard the line in the movie. I was like, I know that from somewhere. Yes. It, it's it's out there in yeah. the pop culture it, either. It'd be like if if we, like in uh, in Space Jacked, if someone said YOLO. Oh, right. You know, like where it's just like, <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, I know that. Yeah, that's oh, why. <laughs> that shouldn't be a thing yet. Why are they saying that here? <laughs> I offer you freedom and wealth sufficient to create your own empire. He became Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Trump backstory. <laughs> I reject your reality <laughs> and substitute, and substitute with my own. That's his whole existence. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> There's no way I can fight this man. He's too large. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> ah, ah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. What? what? That's something it can do. You... Thanks. Thanks, Cal. Thanks. What? He made a little rod from the ground. Yes. Up to it. That would have been really cool for like a challenge earlier on. I guess we're stuck here in hell. Oh, you're right. So I knew that was what was going to happen. Back to the apartment. And even though the devil is now dead and no longer has the ability to teleport them back home, they teleport back home. Yeah. And more importantly, the girlfriend realized the importance of the computer and said yes <laughs> to marrying the hero. Why didn't you tell me it could shoot lasers? <laughs> I would have married you years ago. <laughs> well, considering that the computer was the one that drew the attention of Satan, I think that would have been reason enough for her to leave him. <laughs> right? Like she became a she became like a born again Christian yeah. after that. She became, <laughs> I'm out of here. She, she became Amish she after that. <laughs> I knew California was gonna be weird. I'm moving back to Jersey. <laughs> To star in the suckling. I'm gonna. Yeah. 
Now, uh, that sounded like a segue if I'd ever heard one. No. Oh. Please stand by for a message from our sponsors. From Loot Crate. <laughs> um, <laughs> Another aborted idea. Go! <laughs> I reject your reality and substitute my own. So, oh. trigger warning. I, yeah, um, like I don't. All, <laughs> trigger, trigger warning. I don't. I all don't, of the triggers. <laughs> all of the triggers. <laughs> like it's uh, about an aborted fetus that turns into a mutant and kills people. So there's going to be some abortion. <laughs> Talks. A little bit of rape. A little bit of rape talk. <laughs> there's it, a, yeah, there's all the badness in this. C c well, all uh, red letter media content warning. <laughs> <laughs> all of it. We're very sorry, but this is the movie we watched. This is a red letter media first. <laughs> we covered a lot of fucked up things. Uh, but... You want to give them a time code if if you're easily like. No, just shut the video off. <laughs> it's utter. It's sleaze. It's yeah. it's complete. Yeah, sleaze. it's it's intentionally tasteless. It's what they were going for. Well, like an abortion, let's just get right into it. <laughs> Jay? I will say, though, it is weird, because once you get past the initial setup, the rest of the movie is a below-average monster movie. Mm -hmm. But that initial setup is quite a doozy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> What the fuck? What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is this the brothel? It just looks like a hospital? Oh, I would hate that. It's a brospital? The brospital? <laughs> oh. oh, heck with it. Let's just watch the trooper. <laughs> but I, I, I I am I'm, I'm I was the one that read the back of this box and yeah. I was shocked yes. by the simplicity on the VHS the tape. The bluntness of it. Yeah, we happened to have a Blu-ray. Um, the, the, the VHS was one sentence. The Blu-ray is like five paragraphs. The, the, there's a lot on the Blu-ray here. Um, Although the, this has vinegar syndrome, so the second one is probably about the transfer or something. Yeah, it is, it is, it yeah. is. Um, I don't know if I should read this. Yeah. Would it help if you read it um, as a quick synopsis? Oh, sure, Because then sure. it might help. Um, okay. Get this over with as quickly as we can. <laughs> After being tricked. Oh, that's right. That's a part of it, too. After being oh, tricked God. into having Jesus an abortion. Christ. Like, that's not. Yeah, that, that, fuck, man. At Big Mama's underground abortion clinic slash brothel. It's a one stop shop. It's your first time, kid. Yes, yes, it is. At a brothel or an abortion clinic? <laughs> hey, princess. Does he do all your talking for you, or are you just too good to speak to me? I'm sorry. Janine's talking to you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Annie Potts. <laughs> Take it from me, it's no big deal. Picking up and dropping off. That's <laughs> 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 good. A young woman's extracted fetus is flushed into the sewer system, wherein it's exposed to toxic wastes and begins to mutate into an ever-growing and increasingly bloodthirsty monster. The girls, Johns, and other assorted weirdos find themselves trapped inside the brothel, <laughs> where they are forced to face off against the agitated uh, prenatal creature, as well as each other, in a high-stakes quest to stay alive, or at least in one piece. Shot entirely in Flushing, New York. Well, the, the, the setup hanger. is weird because... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take, take it away, Jay. Well, okay, so they go, she goes, the, the main character, who may or may not even have a name, I don't even know, um, she goes there with her jock boyfriend to the abortion clinic. But they go there, and it turns out she goes into the room. They tell the boyfriend to wait out in the waiting room. Yeah, they're, they're like only, this, like, seedy. Yeah, exactly. they're like, only, only you know, you have to stay out here. Only she and can she come And she thinks in. she's just going to talk to them? She says. It's really weird. Yeah, she says, I don't want an abortion. I want to keep it, but I'm here just to, to please appease my boyfriend. She wants to talk about options with the lady. She brings up maybe having the baby and giving it up for adoption. She's trying to please the boyfriend. He's forcing her to go here. Yeah, right. But he has an ulterior motive. Yeah, we, we'll we cut to. to the basement where he is paying extra to make sure that they give her a super abortion. 
Um, and then, <laughs> so Big Mama drugs her. Child, I don't need your money. I own this big house and I'm living good. I just Please, like giving abortions. <laughs> I'm in it for the passion. There's no eyes, no ears, no fingers. It ain't human. I think she it wants to lie human. about having yes. an abortion? Yeah. And this lady says, tough titty toenails, I'm giving you an abortion. <laughs> So she's getting an abortion against her will. What a weird business model. Big Mama turns out she's not just in this for the money. She's not just performing a service to people. She just apparently likes giving abortions and will give them against your will. Yes. Yes. <laughs> she's a true villain that is not treated like a villain throughout no, the entire after that, film. No, after that initial setup, she's just treated as a victim like everybody else. Right. Oh, we should feel bad that Big Mom is in trouble. Same with the boyfriend. Yeah. Who is giving his girlfriend an unwanted abortion. Yeah. There, there's no no sort of moral consequences to any of this. No. And then boyfriend almost kind of takes on the protagonist role after this. Yeah. So, what's going on? Look, everything's going to be all right. Relax, honey. You have a good boyfriend. What? Um. Okay. So, tonal swaps. This movie shows a bloody little aborted fetus. Yes. Before that. <laughs> There is a comedy scene in which a man has a dildo stuck up his ass, and to show that he enjoys it, the beanie that he is currently <laughs> wearing on his head. The propeller beanie, yeah. Spins. Yeah. This is what happens when Sam Raimi meets John Waters. I, I don't know, you guys mentioned the John Waters thing, but I don't feel like most of this movie has a sense of humor about itself. No, I think no, it no, no, thinks no. it has a sense of humor. I don't know, it's, very, places, it's very weird because places. because going back to the, yeah, we follow up the, the, the propeller beanie scene with the abortion scene, which is not played as funny. It's not like they're going for like trauma, shock value humor or anything. But then we cut to, they take the, the boarded fetus yeah. and they flush it down the toilet, but that's not presented as com comedic. No, no, it's, it's disgusting. I don't it's know if strange. it's supposed to be funny because, I mean, the idea is so absurd, no. but it's presented so matter-of-factly. Well, the fishing line is funny. <laughs> is that a string? Oh! <laughs> oh, the string is a string! <laughs> That's not where poop goes, not in the storm drain. It's a different system, but that's okay. It's fine, it's fine. For, for an establishment that, that aborts fetuses, <laughs> apparently late-term fetuses, flushing them down the toilet isn't the best way to dispose of the baby because it's gonna clog up the pipes. <laughs> I mean, it's just... It's childish. Look, they've been amateurs. at this for a while. They know what they're doing. They're the experts, not you, Mike. Big Mama knows what she's doing. They got a really good toilet system, but it's gross. It's it's, it's literally like stomach churning, gross. Yes. Sure. Because it kind of really looks like, until it becomes deformed by the toxic waste. It really looks like a like a dead baby. Well, the fucked up thing is, once it goes down into the sewer. Even before the toxic waste falls on it, it's moving around. Yeah, it's kind it's of alive. It's still alive. Yeah. Oh, look! Oh, my God. Oh, it's crying. It's alive somehow. And it's like little chest is breathing. Yeah. And, and, and it's making noise. Cut to, so like that's like a serious, disturbing imagery. Cut to a comedy scene in yeah. which Big Mama is on bending the coat hanger oh, yeah, yeah. that she used for the abortion with the goop she, still She's on pulling it. flesh off of it, and then she uses it to hang her coat on. That's like the most like edgelordy joke in the movie. Yes, that's uh, edgelord. Yeah. Very like, ooh, am I pushing your buttons? But it's, it's kind of just that part. Yeah. But, but one detail, I'm sure you'll show a clip of it, but she doesn't even properly fully clean off the hanger. I think that's supposed to be funny. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of like yeah. where it's just taking it way too far, where it's like, is this supposed to be funny? Is this supposed to shock you? Is that she's so sloppy? Is that the point? Is that she just doesn't care she's been doing it so much? I know. It's supposed to shock you that she's reusing the coat hanger. As, Ooh, yeah, that's not a, something you would see in a mainstream movie. <laughs> We're pushing the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That is the cutest, most disgusting thing at the same time. I don't know how to feel about this. It's weird. And the coat hanger, yeah. Like, see, this is like, this is tasteless, but in a arty way. Um, what? The coat hanger. Yeah, coat hanger gag and the dildo gag yeah. are like, that's a different movie. And then the rest of the movie is a standard monster movie. Yes. Wow. Ah! Where was it hiding? <laughs> Below frame. With with confusing plot developments. Some weird logic with, with the house and not being able to get out of it. Is it is that a <laughs> That's a jiggling of the handle sound effect. Come on. You wouldn't know bullshit if you were standing Does it have under magical door door locking power? Can't you see something's <laughs> happening, Laura? Yeah, why can't they just go outside? Yeah, it's like they knew, like, well, we have this location. The whole movie's gonna take place here. Uh, why why don't they just leave? Oh, the door won't open? <laughs> I'm just I'm just picturing like the guy who's holding like the boom mic. He, he just says, Well, why doesn't everyone just leave the house? <laughs> And then there's just like this awkward silence <laughs> where everyone just like looks at each other. And then the guy, the guy opens up the script and just... Uh, uh, hold on. Um, yeah. I gotta, the door won't open. Well, they establish one window has... I'm assuming it's supposed to be like placenta or something, uh, and it's covering up the whole window. So they can't get out through the window. They don't establish that on the door. But when they do get out of the door, eventually we discover a maze of... of uh, fabric rope senses. Rope, uh, jo Joanne Fabrics just exploded. <laughs> <laughs> At least wet it down. Yeah, maybe? yeah. Slime yeah. It up. Put some slime. So on it's, it. it's supposed to be in like a cocoon, like the over. Oh, he's in the placenta zone, <laughs> which is made up of ropes. I mean, especially if you're making a movie like this, where it, the, clearly part of the intention is to shock and gross you out, and then they gave up on that after the first ten minutes. But yeah, if you're you're having your character crawl through this like sinewy, gooey yeah. like womb, yeah. make it gross. And 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 to counterbalance that, or to counter that, the monster looks great. Mm -hmm. I think what I liked even more than the final monster was the transformation sequences, because they keep cutting oh, back to the sewer. Yes. They, the monster is, is a, of course, an aborted fetus that gets flushed on the toilet, somehow ends up... There's in, toxic waste in the backyard right. that drips down the, into the so storm drain. It gets dripped on by the toxic waste, but then we cut we back We don't know to why it. the toxic waste is back there. And if it's been back there for a while, how has this never happened before? Look, they're at an abortion clinic slash brothel. <laughs> they're probably also tripling as a toxic waste dump. Okay. An, an unauthorized toxic waste dump on the side. Well, Big Mama is an entrepreneur. Sure, sure. sure. They want to dump your toxic waste in the backyard. Fine. Maybe, maybe just a day before Jay, that toxic waste barrel was 10 feet away. And somebody pulled in their nasty pickup truck to come get an abortion, and they banged it with their car, rolled it right next we, to the We thing. should have seen that. That would have been a good scene. scene. That, yeah. that would have been great. Dun, dun, dun. A client left was so happy with their BJ <laughs> that they were like, they weren't painted. Oh, what did I hit? Oh, well, I'm so happy because I had a BJ. Yeah. Right. Well, that's, uh, speaking of trauma, that's the setup in The Toxic Avenger. It's, it's these two guys driving a truck filled with toxic waste barrels in the back. Yeah. Uh, the main guy who becomes the Toxic Avenger, he works at this health clinic, and they s decide to stop to like do cocaine, and they happen to do it right in front of the, uh, the, the, the place where he works. So he set it all up, oh, and there's yeah. the toxic waste. So when he falls out the window, he lands in the toxic waste. It's not just toxic waste that's there for no reason. Yeah. Uh, a backstory motivation for why the toxic waste barrel was dripping into the storm drain onto the aborted fetus is Jeez. important <laughs> in your script. Um, but I'm still trying to get to that transformation. Oh, we have fuck. four or five cutbacks to the transformation, and, and he's, he's getting bigger, and his eyes are opening up. Little tentacles are coming out of his arm, and it, it's great. I think it's it's a, a great an umbilical puppet. cord shoots out of his stomach, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his weapon, his um, umbilical cord. It's an umbilical cord. It's kind of neat. 
Miss Candy is coming from inside. Oh, they attempted to do a reverse photography thing, but it didn't quite work. Oh, whoa, what? <laughs> that happened somehow. Pulled her head down so hard that it decapitated her. Our, what should be our protagonist, which kind of turns out to be the case at the end, is our main girl, mm -hmm. um, who is, I, I think, a college student. They call, keep calling them college boy. They seem like high school our, kids our to me. Our main girl, who is in the movie so little, we don't know her name, yeah. her occupation. <laughs> Her backstory, yeah. where she's from, what she hopes for in life, where she was for half the movie. <laughs> well, the boyfriend has, I, th I think he's wearing like a Letterman jacket, so we're gonna assume high school or college. She, obviously, she's his boy, uh, girlfriend, so blah, blah, blah. But she's the abortion victim. She's the, the source. Of yeah, that's a weird way to put it. Yes, she is an yeah, abortion she victim. She is, yeah. <laughs> She got an abortion against her will. Abortion. Yes, this is not us making a judgment on abortions in general. <laughs> she in is this case, literally an abortion victim. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> disclaimer, disclaimer, content warning. A, a typically, an abortion victim would be a baby. But, but in this case, she is an abortion victim in, in a different sense. <laughs> um, I guess technically you're correct. But yeah, yeah, yeah. She. <laughs> we're just being, we're just being honest here. This is the movie. This is the movie that we saw, and we're, we're discussing it. Unfortunately, we saw. Um, but yeah, she she disappears throughout the whole movie, and that is your starting point because you uh, likened her to Barbara from Night of the Living Dead. I got so afraid, I ran, I ran. <laughs> Yes. Who is is basically comatose. She's catatonic for most of the movie, but they established that, and we yes. know that. Here, she's just not in scenes, and I was like, where is she? Right. What courage. Where's the, the main girl? The one who had the abortion? Yes, that's a great question. She's at school. Oh, you mean while they're filming? Yeah. I'm just thinking, like, she's the one that had the abortion. You'd think they would be building up some sort of, like, she has a connection with it Ooh, or something. Yeah. I don't think they're going to do Jay, that. This is best of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, they've completely just forgotten about her in the movie. Yeah, like, she's just she's gone. She's not anywhere. Where is she at in this house? Yeah. When the monster finally comes face to face with the mother, it it doesn't know what to do or has sympathy. It's like Alien Resurrection. Oh with, with, yeah, with yeah, Ripley, yeah. With Ripley, where it kind of feels sad, and then Ripley knows the best thing to do is to kill it. Yeah. Because she can't allow it to get to Earth. Right. And that could kind of be the ending with the girl. Is the whole point of the movie? She didn't want to get an abortion. Now she and has at the to end, kill it to save other people because it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger. Did. Jack, you missed it. No, no, I saw it. I'm good. I'm good. It, it shrunk down and went back in her, her uterus. It turned into a, a, a marionette. For Why didn't they use the other puppets? On? I don't know. Maybe they lost it? They lost it. They lost the prop? I think like the real point of all of this is that there was no... There was no urgency to any of the characters, and there was no connection to the uh, from the characters to the monster. Where it's like, really, that was the story, is like the main girl's relationship with the monster. Because at the end of the day, most horror movies are monster as metaphor, right? Godzilla, nuclear power, both good and destructive. Discuss, Godzilla. <laughs> And so here you have an opportunity to discuss like the greater mm -hmm. fear of motherhood. The fear of motherhood, the responsibilities, the danger of having a pregnancy too early, the danger of uh, bodily harm, blah, blah. Like there is a lot of... The danger of a back alley abortion. <laughs> exactly. Like there is 
meat on this particular bone, and I really hated saying that. I'm so sorry. I know exactly what footage I'm going to overplay or re oh, saying no, that. No, no. Oh, no. So are they going to attempt to rape her? No, the monster's going to come out of the her The fetus cooter. monster is going to... I think that's what's going on. Yeah. They seem like dirt balls. Yeah. And then ends up in an insane asylum getting raped. Yeah. It's like, well, that's not what we want to have. Even though the rapists get their comeuppance, no pun intended. I got it. It's just not going to laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for cum? <laughs> oh. It was a pun. <laughs> um, but she still, she still is, is in a psych ward yeah. and getting raped, and it's not pleasant. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just uh. Uh, uh. That's the perfect summary of the film, by the way. Yeah, I, I, I think we've dissected this as uh, much as we could. In fact, you could say we've pulled out as much as we could from this film. Let's, let's kill this discussion early. <laughs> <laughs> Let's end this. <laughs> you guys, like, I don't know if this movie will work. Do we have a plan B? <laughs> we got, we got jokes all night, people. <laughs> oh, I feel terrible. Right <laughs> all these guys want to do these days is shoot their load in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everybody, it's that time of night when we get to pick our best of the worst. Um, I'm going to start from my left oh, because it started oh with you. For the, Jay, oh. your best of the worst? Uh, I, I think most enjoyable is Dungeon Master. Um, the other two are interesting in their own right. The Suckling is something else. That's, that's something special. But we should point out that a lot of it is kind of boring. There's the initial yeah. setup, and then there's the ending, which is fucked up. The middle section where it's just a monster movie is kind of dull. Uh, I think I'm going to echo your sentiments. Uh, I think Dungeon Master is the best of the worst. I really wanted to love Space Jacked because I love a terrible, flimsy set <laughs> sci-fi <laughs> schlock movie, but... It didn't eh, have much more than the flimsy sets, though. Yeah, it, 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 it didn't quite live up to that true like level of a really funny B-movie. Mm -hmm. Um, this this is just batshit, bonkers, crazy. All these things are happening. There's so much stuff going on. Um, and the suckling, uh, gross. <laughs> and some not enough, decent cinematography. Yeah, decent. There were some attempts at interesting lighting throughout of it. Throughout it, there's the the fan, the light going through the fan. Okay, some okay. Interesting well, camera yeah. movement. Yeah. Well, then, then we're all echoing each other so far because I am going with Dungeon Master and Space Jack is dull. <laughs> it's just dull. Yeah. What about the lady who had a fantasy about getting raped by a caveman? <laughs> That looked consensual to me. I'm just going to put that out. You know what, Mike? You sold me. I'm making Space Jack my pick for best of the worst because there was a woman who fantasized about being forcibly taken by a caveman. That was the winning argument, Mike. I knew that, I knew that would push you over the edge, Rich. Uh, Jack? Before I choose Dungeon Master as my best of the worst, I would like to give a special commendation to Space Jack as it was, in my opinion, the perfect first movie on a three-movie <laughs> night. By, by which you mean it was the most boring. <laughs> but I mean, technically, it was the second movie. But we don't talk about Ice Cream Man. <laughs> that was a perfect warm-up movie. The Dungeon Master was clearly super fun, though. Uh, as, uh, as someone who has been playing a lot of Dungeons & Dragons throughout quarantine, I am a little upset that there weren't more Dungeons or Dragons, so. It did have a wolf man. Never mind, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, dare I suggest, I, I, would, I would probably say none of us want to destroy any of these. The Suckling is despicable, but it is just a movie. It's unique. And it's unique. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it, yeah. it is a nice looking Blu-ray and it is something <laughs> that is- Yeah, shout out to Vinegar Syndrome. Yeah. They always do top notch work with 
even something like the Suckling. It is something that would never, ever, ever, ever be made today under any circumstances. <laughs> Uh, so it, it is a nice look back at, at 1983, 89, 89, 89, 89 yeah. at, at kind of what what sickos in New York were doing in 1989. Yeah. It's borderline for me. <laughs> I, I would be okay with passively destroying space jacks. <laughs> where we where we destroy it, but we do like the least amount of effort possible to destroy okay, it. Okay, what about instead of <laughs> instead of destroying it, we just kind of leave it somewhere and forget about it? Oh, where, where is everybody? Oh, hello, hello. Somebody told me to come out this way, down this hallway. Hello? Hello, hello? Space Jack? What? Ah, there you are, Space Jack. Uh, what? You know, you did a real good job as a movie today, Space Jack. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. In fact, uh -huh. we're thinking of giving you a promotion. Uh, a promotion? <laughs> that's right. Oh, wow. If you turn around and look at those doors that are right behind what? you. Do we, where? Why, that's the promotion room, oh, Space just, just Jack. Right through there. Just oh, walk oh, right on through and right through there. we'll turn you into a much better movie. Okay, yeah. Oh. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Oh, oh, I'm excited to go right through those doors, huh? Oh, oh. Now, oh. it's time for your promotion. Is this a you promotion know, room? I can see you being a Star Wars. Or may maybe you could play your cards oh, right. Is this so Even sorry, a 2001 sorry. A Space Odyssey. Well, um, what's going on? All right, Space Jack. Time Time for your promotion. What's going on? Hello, it's me, Red Letter Media. While we were filming our episode of Best of the Worst recently, I noted, I think the cameras were off at the time, I noted something very special about the Space Jacked VHS cover. This is obviously a reissue. Probably came out in the 90s, I don't know. But I noticed something interesting about the cover, which we talked about off camera. I had made a mental note to bring it up in the discussion, but I totally forgot to. But on the Space Jacked cover, the spaceship that appears is not the spaceship in the film, but it is in fact an upside down Romulan warbird ripped off from Star Trek The Next Generation, uh, mixed with some other kind of spaceshipy components. So uh, Jay, the editor of the segment, will show in detail a side-by-side -side comparison, you're probably looking at it now, of the Space Jacked cover and this which is a Romulan Warbird. Oh, Mike, but it's green. That's why I'm putting it in front of my chest, you stupid idiot. 